Good morning. Thank you so much. As James referred to and Megan referred to, we're talking about the idea about having passion behind what you're doing. But how many of actually take the time? How many of us actually take the time to identify what we want to do? Not only in business, but in our personal lives. How many of us actually ask the question, what makes me happy? And then actually dedicate and take the time to do something that makes you happy. Obviously, I love to surf. Surfing certainly makes me happy. I started surfing when I was four years old down at Manly Beach, and it was an environment that wasn't very encouraging or welcoming of women. Mantown, couldn't have been more appropriately named. But I loved the challenges of growing up in a very challenging environment. I loved the challenges because they taught me about myself, stepping outside of my comfort zone, teaching me about what I'm capable of. Because when you stay in your comfort zone, when you stay in an environment where you actually reach a level of complacency, then you don't truly understand or become aware of what you're capable of, or even what you want. I was out surfing with a friend yesterday, and he asked me, what does 2013 look like for you? What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? And when I took the time to answer the question, it gave me clarity, it gave me a sense of direction. It really actually drove in my purpose. The three things that I want to achieve this year is I want to be happy. I want to do things that make me happy. How many of us make the time or even take the time to identify what makes us happy? Surfing makes me happy, so I know I have to spend more time surfing. It's a great, great way to get out of the office. Secondly, I want to spend more quality time with my husband, Kirk. Surfing also keeps me fit. And thirdly, I want to do more to enhance the life of others. As Tripod mentioned, I have my own foundation called the Aim for the Stars Foundation. It provides financial and moral support for women across Australia to achieve their dreams in all endeavours. Music, science, culture, sports, academia. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to enhance the life of others. I'm so grateful that by pursuing a dream, that by pursuing a passion, by knowing what I wanted, and identifying the team of people that could support that journey and assist me in, in achieving a dream such as becoming a world champion, enabled me to not only rewrite the history books, but then presented me with the opportunity to change people's lives. Every single one of us have that opportunity. Every single one of us can make a positive difference to somebody else's life. All you have to do is make that choice, is make that commitment. And so I'm a big believer in everything happening for a reason. As I said, I'm very grateful for my challenges. Does everyone believe, or I know everyone's heard the cliche, everything happens for a reason, but does everyone believe that things happen for a reason? I think we've all been given this lesson over and over again. I'd like to share a, a story with you that what happened to me sometime earlier this year that truly reinforced that point. I was asked to go and present at a conference in Aspen. I know, poor me. And it was all about overcoming challenges. And I saw that as a great opportunity to get away from the beach for a week and go snowboarding. And also present to a conference. And it was a, to an accountants, lawyers and directors conference. Now, I don't know much about any of those things, but I do know about what it, what it takes to achieve a dream, what it takes to maintain success. There are so many parallels to be drawn between being a world champion athlete and what you have to do on a daily basis to succeed in life and in business. Having a winning mindset, having the courage to set goals, the ability to adapt to change, overcoming challenges, staying at number one, reinventing yourself, maintaining motivation, good solid leadership, setting positive examples. All those things I learned from becoming a world champion athlete. But I also know how to overcome challenges and adapt to change through my daily experiences of going into the water. So when I was presented with this opportunity to go to Aspen, I said, OK, I'll talk to your team and your people about overcoming challenges. And so I got to the airport, I checked in, I was ready to go, and they swipe your passport, and my passport wasn't readable. It's the first time I've ever been denied access out of a country. They rang Homeland Security in the States and said, if you can't read the passport there, we're not going to read it here, don't let her out. I'm not a flight risk but they wouldn't let me out. So they sent me home. 
And I was originally flying from Sydney to Dallas to Aspen. I was arriving on the Wednesday night, and I was going to then present at the conference on the Thursday afternoon. And so Qantas said, OK, we'll reroute your ticket through Los Angeles, and we're going to have to change all the internal flights. And it's amazing when, it, when you get let down, how it, quickly they can pick you back up and organize flights. And so I went home via the passport office, and I thought, I'm just going to leave it in the hands of the gods. I'm going to leave it in the hands of things happening for a reason and accept that this is my course, this is my direction. So I went via the passport office, I had a new flight, and I said, if I can get a new passport today, then I'll go tomorrow. Otherwise, I'm just not going to bother going at all. And so at 3 o'clock, I arrive at the passport office, and I hand in my old passport. I said, I need a new passport. And they sent me on this convoluted trail to find my passport photos. Come back at 3.30. The office shuts at 4. I hand it in. I say, any chance of getting it today? And they say, no. <laughs> Damn you. And they say, what time's your flight tomorrow? And I said, about midday. And they said, well, come back in at 9.30 in the morning and you can have your new passport then. I said, yeah, but the traffic from the northern beaches at 9.30 in the morning isn't that great. Any chance I can get it today? And he said, sorry, it's written on your form, you can't get it till tomorrow. I went, OK. So just as he was typing all the details in, a lady came in to pick up the forms, and he just suggested to her, hang on, wait, more. there's one more. And she looked out the window, and she's like, oh, hi. And I went, hi, how's it going? She said, good. Can I have your autograph? <laughs> and I said, I tell you what. <laughs> You gave me a new passport in about an hour, I'll give you all the autographs you want. She said, just sit over there, we'll see what we can do. I said, great, I will. So I sat there, there was no indication whether I was going to receive my passport at that moment or not. And so I sat there just waiting, and then 45 minutes later, miraculously, I got a new passport. Signed the autographs, and away I went. Now, there are pros and cons to being known in this country, and I will abuse the privileges whenever I get the chance. <laughs> So I drove on home. My, my husband had actually come back to the airport, picked me up, and we drove home. And he said he was freaking out. Surely there's something you can do. Maybe you shouldn't go. And I said, listen, I've got new flights. I'm now going through LA. I've got a new passport. I'm just going to go and see what happens. The great thing about changing my flights was I was still able to land in time to present at my original time. So go back a week before getting on the plane. I was thinking about the structure of my content about overcoming challenges. And has anyone seen a TV show called Inside the Actors Studio? A few people? OK, James Lipton is a great teacher of actors. He's coached all the most famous actors in the world. And I was watching an interview with Matt Damon. And so he was talking about this challenge that he had when he committed himself to performing to the best of his ability. Just like James said, he knew what he wanted to be, and he performed at that level. And there was a, a movie, that, his first movie that he did called Courage Under Fire. And he invested his heart and soul into that character. He went from being a healthy-looking guy to then, halfway through the film, looking like a heroin-addicted character. He was so impressed with his performance. He was so committed and disciplined to that that he was truly expecting to be critically acclaimed for his performance. And so when the movie came out, he was so excited. And then when it came out, he was really left despondent and disappointed because they casted straight over him. They didn't even mention him. And someone's as cute as that. Why wouldn't you mention him, right? So they didn't mention him, and he was really disheartened. And it made him question, is acting really what I want to do? Because it's not really giving me the fulfillment that I really necessarily wanted or craved. So he went back to school to increase his education and his learning, went back to Harvard, did his fifth year of Harvard, and, wrote, and went and did a playwright course and started writing Goodwill Hunting. When he submitted it for, to his teacher, his teacher said, this is amazing, this is incredible, you need to complete this. So he went, I don't know where to take it, I don't know how to continue on with it. So he rang up Ben Affleck, moved over to California, spent two or three months writing Goodwill Hunting, finished it, submitted it, put it out to tender, and it actually started a bidding war. And so I thought, this is a great example of the tenacity and the commitment to overcoming a challenge. So I'm going to use this part of my content to then start off my presentation in Aspen. So I was thinking on my way to LA, I need to really start writing my, my presentation. I really need to start putting some thought into it. I've got the, the start of it, but I don't have the rest of it. And so I landed in Los Angeles feeling like absolute crap. 
and I didn't sleep very well. And I went into the Qantas lounge, I had a shower, and I sat back down, and all of a sudden, Matt Damon walked in. <laughs> and I just went, oh my God, that's Matt Damon. I have to go speak to him. So I walked up to him and I said, excuse me, Matt. And he looked up at me as if to say, yes, you're bothering me, but I'll tolerate you. And he go, I said, listen, um, I just want to ask you a question about that whole Courage Under Fire incident and what motivated you to keep going. And, and then we had a really good chat. And I said, thank you for your time. And he was really cordial and very warm and, and encouraging. And then I walked off and I went to the bathroom and I came back and I went, I have to have a photo with this guy. This is completing my content for the conference. For the conference. And so I walked back up to him and I said, excuse me, Matt. He goes, yes. <laughs> and I said, do you mind if I have a photo? I'm an ex-world champion surfer. He goes, you can surf? I love surfing. I am the world's worst surfer, but I love surfing. I said, yeah, I'm sure you'd love to surf like a girl, but I oh, know you can't. <laughs> but do you mind if I have a photo? Because I'm starting my conference with my presentation with your story. And he goes, yeah, sure, I'd love to. And he stood up and he took his photo with me. And he said, do you know what? No one sees the shit you go through. No one sees the hard times. Everyone sees the end picture and thinks it was easy. So he said, thank you for sharing my story with people to encourage them to overcome challenges. And that was the outcome, an amazing photo with Matt Damon. So things, well, it's not an amazing photo of me or him, but <laughs> <laughs> obviously I didn't sleep that night. But it was such a remarkable uh, lesson in trusting things and knowing and believing and trusting in things happening for a reason. Learning to go with the flow, adapting to change, and you don't ever know where you're going to end up. Because the results that we create in life are always a direct reflection of our beliefs, of ourselves and our lives. Thanks for having me.